Hello. Good morning. Good morning, students. Uh, okay, this is Muhammad Abdi Rahman, right? And uh, Muhammad Jude, I guess he was there and uh, I guess he got disconnected. Well, uh, we will begin with the class now. Um, before we move on further, I'd like to advise you that uh, after every class, I want you to go back and you know check what has been taught in the class so that in case you do not understand any concept, you can come back for the next class and then you know seek clarification to that extent. Um, and yet another thing is, of course, um, uh, I reiterate about the uh, attendance. Attendance carries marks. And assignments, please be vigilant about the assignment and uh, try to submit it um, you know, within the deadline. So now let's move on with what has been uh, like, you know, uh, what I've decided for today. Uh, today, we will move further to chapter five and chapter six. Uh, and what I want you to do is go through my, uh, you know, the notes that I'm providing, and then you can, you know, compare it to the textbook and, you know, you can do extra references and, and add on and then use that method of study. Now, last class, we learned about monitoring approaches, right? So this class, this class, we are going to learn about evaluation and evaluation approaches and techniques. Let's directly go to our slides because today's class will be a little bit um, extensive, it'll be, you know, and so um, I do not want to fall short of time. So today we will learn about project evaluation and approaches. Uh, I remember during the first class when I was giving you the introductory class, I explained to you uh, what is project evaluation as well. And I gave you a general idea of project evaluation, project monitoring. And I also spoke about the significance, the, significance, the features and so on. Now, what we're going to do in this class is we are going to, you know, specifically, uh, you know, root our discussion towards, you know, project evaluation and the various approaches that is used. Uh, you know, just to set the perspective, uh, I'm sure you know the meaning of the word vision, okay? Just to just, uh, you know, a kind of uh, a simple... Uh, I just want to give you a simple outlook rather than, you know, uh, going to the concept directly and just to set the perspective, I'd like to just begin with, uh, you know, just ask by asking you, like, whether you understand the meaning of vision, I'm sure you do. Now, for uh, for everything, we need a vision. A company has a vision, individual vision and goals and so on. Likewise, we also learned uh, during all the other classes that we have had and we have discussed with each other, we have learned that even project has vision and goals. Now, evaluation concerns itself with the vision. Listen to me carefully. Evaluation concerns itself with the vision and, the, with, and to check and evaluate and assess whether there is enough provision for getting or achieving the vision. Listen carefully. I'm just trying to give, uh, yeah, give you a kind of, you know, um, a simple, like, and I just try to encapsulate the entire theory part of it and the practical part of it, just with the word vision, the words vision and provision. Might seem weird to you, but I'm reiterating this thing. Vision and provision. Every project has a vision in mind. It has certain goals. Now, for accomplishing that vision, we require provision. Now, for a project, there is a vision. Provision is arranged. Now, what is the role of evaluation? 
a project manager or sometimes even they would take the you know uh, i mean uh, you know contract the services of an external evaluator or it is done even by a project head or project manager uh, you know with its team now the role in evaluation the project manager or an external evaluator if they contract the services they play is they look at the project what is explained to them or what they know is you know in the mind of the investors or the stakeholders or the employers of the project they look at the vision they look at the provision and then they assess whether at stage one i'm just putting it to you in simple terms okay at stage okay. At stage one, they check whether the provision is enough to meet the vision. You know, in project terms, you call it as feasibility. You check about the cost factor, whether the place is feasible, and so on. So I'm not going into feasibility and all those words. I'm just talking about whether the provision is enough for meeting the project vision. Then after that, they prepare a report they discuss and the project is now moving towards the next stage of designing or strategizing the project. Now, just, you know, try to imagine in your mind, the other project manager. So next is, now you started, now the strategy of the, there are different strategies, it's a teamwork. And then the project strategy is given to you, project design is designed by the team, project strategy is designed. Now, at this stage again, it is evaluated whether the project design again or the strategy which is developed whether it is again aligned to the vision project goal whether it is aligned to whether the provisions are again there as per the design whether it is mentioned with all the provisions whatever they had you know mentioned it in the project charter at stage one whether it is there then they check the design, whether it's appropriate, they check the missing links, and then again, they move towards the third stage, that is project implementation. To theoretically study, it looks very easy, you know, but practically speaking, we'll have to consider things in a simplified way to handle difficult tasks. The third step is, after the project design, again, you know, during the implement, third step is again the implementation of the project. So while the project is being implemented, again, evaluation plays an important role. Why? To see that the project is not delayed, the project goals are met, and not to say, you know, towards the, uh, you know, towards the deadline of the project, whatever is in, say, oh my God. We have not completed this thing. Oh, there are so many loopholes. There are so many shortcomings. So therefore, strategic meeting of goals, even during implementation process is again evaluated. That means the project is ongoing. It is like taken off. The project is taken off. Now, after that, again, it's an ongoing process. They evaluate at a particular milestone if they strategize it earlier and they say that okay we have achieved certain milestones and the project is towards completion and now they again evaluate at stage four at the completion stage then they would check okay now the project is completed now has it met the goals has it maximized the outcomes project outcomes has it really achieved everything, whatever it was possible? And now comes the time for project commissioning, fifth stage, and project delivery. After that, again, there is an evaluation report which is prepared, and they check how the project was implemented from the inception, how, what were the impediments they faced, what were the contingencies which they were able to meet, what were the mistakes, the, the, how smooth was the project, they prepare a report again. Now this report serves the purpose of, you know, a record for future projects. Now, 
the entire project, the evaluation which is done, or even monitored, but the evaluation which is done, always it is wise and prudent to you know do it also with you know taking into consideration the the you know the stakeholders the investors and keeping the transactions transparent even to the investors the stakeholders and uh, also sometimes to you know get ideas from them like what they are actually looking for and throughout the project you know uh, you know liaisoning with them and then together achieve the goal and you know go towards the successful accomplishment and delivery of the project. So I'm repeating in simple terms, every project is concerned with a vision and provision. And it is, the, it is this vision and provision that is evaluated throughout the project. So that, of course, there are other factors, but all the factors revolve around this vision and provision. If you note the word provision, there is a word vision. Never commit the mistake of, uh, you know, um, you know, running after provisions for the project. The factors that are uh, that are going to be involved at the inception, so the factors that are going to be involved in the project first, before understanding the vision of the project. As per the vision of the project, you strategize provisions and then you move ahead to adopt the right approach the right technique of evaluation depending upon a, certainly the type of project it is it could be a social project it could be a construction project whatever project different types of project now of course we cannot learn different type of projects everything just in one subject this is just the uh, you know the, the 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 criteria that we are giving you and the, you know, the sketch of what is actually project monitoring that it is expected to be done evaluation is expected to be done and whatever kind of project it is because depending upon the type of project the approaches differ the the, the techniques differ you know charitable projects are assessed in a different way uh, normally they use case study uh, you know approach and uh, again, uh, there are even capital, uh, you know, capital projects are again, there are different approaches to, you know, assessing a capital project. And there are different approaches to assessing, say, a philanthropic project, charitable project. There are different ways of assessing, a, you know, a construction project, a PPE project. PPE, that means public private enterprise, where the government, uh, you know, joins hands with private enterprises, say, for example, for construction of roads. For construction of bridges, for construction of airports, construction of seaports. There are so many things involved. So there are different projects. So the type of project also should be borne in mind and accordingly the right approach. But in simple words, if I have to, uh, you know, tell anybody or even tell my students in simple words, would like, no. Uh, or even if I have to talk to someone who would not understand what is really project monitoring and evaluation, I would simply say that, well, uh, there are certain, that is a particular vision that is designed for this project, and uh, there are certain provisions. So I'm there to evaluate the, you know, the provisions, whether the available provisions are enough to really achieve the vision and to, you know, evaluate the project at different stages. And, uh, the, that they have explained to me the vision. Now I'm going to, uh, you know, evaluate what, like, what is the vision, what the the feasibility part of it. So of course the provisions part of it, and see whether it is uh, like what is required. And then I would go towards when it, the provisions are arranged to see whether uh, and no, and the project is designed, uh, you know, to see whether all the provisions are mentioned, contingencies are mentioned. Then, uh, you know or provisions for the contingencies are mentioned, then I would uh, also go forward and check about, just in simple words, I would tell them, I'd go forward and check about at the implementation stage, whether you know there is a, a good nexus between, or there is a dearth or a scarcity of any provision, or what are the loopholes, what are the, so that I, I, I would want to nip, them, uh, nip the matter in the bud, try to seal off or cement off whatever the loopholes or shortcomings are there, whatever is possible. I would like to you know retire 
retire in case they will retire the uh, you know additional expenses and uh, you know try to uh, evaluate and tell tell the stakeholders or, or the employer of the project or the investors whoever is the main concerned parties including the project team like this is what is like needs to be done and I, I would move towards and advise them on faster achievement of milestones or at least timely achievement of milestones. And then when it is completed, again, evaluate to see that everything they have really the, the, the vision and provision has matched and then commissioning stage and delivery stage. Again, I prepare the final report. This report would go also to the investors, the stakeholders, the project team, and the one who has had, uh, you know, the one who has uh, contracted for the project it depends and whoever the, the 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 interested parties or the interested beneficiaries would receive a copy of my report and what i would learn is what i you know what i did not accomplish in time what was actually due to be accomplished and what were the shortcomings i would learn that and i would also learn about uh, how easy was it to really uh, you know implement the project and evaluate the project i would learn all that and then again keep it in my mind and advise it for future projects you understanding so this is just simple as it is now let's go to our slides and see technically what is project evaluation and what are the approaches there now, project evaluation is a critical task in the management of the project. It is a significant process. It's an important process that involves procuring information, data from the project team, interpreting the data, assessing, and then appropriate. That means, uh, you know, to apportion it and to utilize and appropriate it, uh, apply it uh, to uh, uh, apply a relevant evaluation method to draw conclusions. So that means what the sentence means is of course it's a significant it's important process it involves taking information collecting data from the project team interpreting the data understanding it interpretation of that data what is collected assessing it checking it evaluating it and then appropriate that means then uh, you know strategically use a relevant appropriate means use it to apply to apply a relevant evaluation method to draw conclusions on the realization of the project that is towards the end whether the project is uh, well accomplished and the extent of effective advancement of the project See, now i've highlighted the word effective but because for me effectivity and how you know how prudently a goal is achieved how effective it is effectivity is very important to do a task everybody does a task but how effectively it is administered and launched that is important so why evaluating a prudent evaluator be it a project manager or an external evaluator whether it is at the beginning of the project or you know uh, while the project is ongoing or during the you know while you know in between while the milestones are being achieved or during the completion stage or even at commissioning and commissioning and delivery stage the effectivity of the project the project delivery the, the the project advancement how effectively it has been advancing how effectively it has been evolving and how effectively it has been achieving milestones, then you track the effective completion of the project. So again, another keyword is effective. So I've given you a keyword, which is not mentioned here, two keywords, vision, for which you need a provision in the project context, of course, vision, for which you need provision. Vision, you study the feasibility and so on technical terms, but vision, provision, evaluation is concerned with effective delivery or delivery in the sense at different stages. How effective is the, the delivery or the, the evolution of the project and the advancement of the project from the inception to the completion and towards the end of commissioning and project delivery. So upon evaluation, there may be any loopholes that come to the fore, the shortcomings, limitations, lacunae, loopholes that come to the fore, that, you know, we try to um, 
strain the project, assess the project, go to the root of the entire uh, whatever is happening, you assess it, then you certainly will find certain shortcomings and loopholes that come to the fore, that comes about to which the project manager or a project evaluator, whoever is appointed, or even external or internal, may arrange for effective amends or changes that are possible. Now, changes, naturally, everyone is averse to change, be it personal lives, professional lives, or even in a project, everyone is averse to change. Something that swift decisions need to be taken and needs to be implemented. So, uh, which one is, uh, oh, uh, can you just, because what for, uh, it gets difficult for me to read the chats. If you could just raise your hand, uh, then I will uh, just answer that query, okay, at the right time. So what was your question? Yeah, sorry, sorry for the interruption. No, no problem. Yeah, yeah the, the way I understood is vision yeah. is a long term or short term goal. Okay, right. Yeah, and yeah, and a provision is a deliverable is uh, conducted or done throughout uh, the evaluation process, like uh, really? activities. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it's a right way of putting it. Very good. That means you understood it, right? You have a vision. So the, why I'm using the word vision, probably you may or may not find it in the, I don't know, textbooks, or maybe you might find it, I'm not sure. But why I'm giving you the word vision is, it is something simple. You have a goal, vision, vision, and provision. Because from the word vision comes the word even provision. So this is easy, it will connect in the, in the mind. Evaluation or monitoring. Monitoring, you know, you have a project vision, you have uh, you have uh, project provisions, then you evaluate, and of course, the entire uh, the stages as you're going to learn and you that you already know. So that's what evaluation is, uh, you know, dealing with. Apart from that, we also are concerned about effectivity because it is just not delivering something; it's also about effective delivery, effective uh, completion. Uh, so I was at which point? Okay, so upon evaluation, there may be loopholes, lacking a limitations that might come to the fore in the project manager or, you know, the evaluator may arrange for, again, effective amends. I was talking about that people are normally averse or they do not like changes, but sometimes it just happens that, you know, any problem can crop up, which for which you know you were never prepared earlier. Any problem can crop up for uh, you know uh, which you were never ready earlier, and uh, you would feel that uh, like for example, COVID is like you know my God, it's a real example of um, how it struck the world, how projects are held up, how money of different businesses were just it was just frozen how people lost jobs and i know of projects that are just suspended because of lack of capital lack of funds you see so uh, you can be ready for all contingencies you can strategize uh, to the extent of how prudent human mind is but you can never really cover up all the contingencies that just might just come up like this and so for that a project team must strategically uh, you know understand and devise a plan that to be ready to uh, you know uh, to give swift uh, you know uh, what they say to give swift solutions to any problems that might crop up or not are you understanding me? Or any problem that crops up, which is, does not find its place even in the project charter or the contingency strategy and so on. So this is called strategic project planning, which includes also project evaluation. So strategy, strategic project evaluation also is a must. So the third keyword I'm giving you, no, the fourth keyword, sorry, I gave you the keywords vision, provision, effective delivery completion. And the fourth word is what? What did I say? I hope you're hearing me. What's the fourth word I said?
No. What's the fourth word? Vision, provision, effective delivery, and strategy. See, these are the keywords. If you remember the keywords, you can connect your answer. Okay. Strategy. Strategy is yet another keyword I gave you. So project evaluation also is critical to keep. Now, what, why it's important is, of course, the same reiteration to keep the stakeholders up, uh, updated on the project status and any changes that might be required to the budget or schedule. Next is project evaluation and project phases. Project evaluation and project phases. Now, of course, project is evaluated at the beginning of the project, it is pre project evaluation stage where the charter is prepared and factors such as feasibility, practicality, uh, you know, et cetera, are evaluated and accordingly planned for implementation. Feasibility, of course, you know, the meaning that whether it's possible, uh, considering different factors, the cost factor, the area, and so on, the feasibility, the possibility, the practicality, whether how prag pragmatically the, the project can be launched. So it is pre project evaluation stage and then it's evaluated and accordingly it moves towards the next stage of planning for implementation next is of course directly if you just cut short the process cut short the stages you move on to the while the project is ongoing so the project must be evaluated even while it is implemented to check for the hurdles in the implementation any loopholes that need to be uh, you know, fixed, et cetera, to ensure that project milestones are met, effective project completion is not hampered, and that it, it set into motion for commissioning and final delivery. Next is post-project evaluation. That is after the project is uh, completed, delivered, and, uh, you know, now, it is already been delivered. So post project evaluation. Now that is carried out for what? For gathering and you know filing relevant materials pertaining to planning, implementation, completion, commissioning, project delivery, the limitations, the shortcomings, the setbacks, the mode of resolution. What was uh, you know the resolution technique? How did they solve problems? of any setbacks that were there, then they prepare a final report and they maintain a tab as a precursor for avoiding any future problems as, you know, as uh, like, you know, as a, uh, what they would say, like a precursor of avoiding any future problems or as, um, you know, as a lesson learned for avoiding any future problems and by using the resolutions and solutions that were used to mitigate uh, any issues in the project, all such data that finally led to the successful completion delivery of the project for future reference. That means future reference, that means for, you know, if there is any uh, problem with the present, pro with the project that is already delivered, then whether, you know, to just have, have a proof and evidence, see, this is how, this was a plan, this is how it was strategized. And even if there is any litigations, uh, you know, it has, you have evidence on record, like, how the project has been ongoing, how the project was completed, how the milestones were met, because there are litigations, mind you. There can be litigations, there can be uh, uh, simple squabbles can lead to you know, court cases. So we need to be careful there. So, uh, so the records are maintained. And again, uh, you know, again, just confining ourselves to just management, uh, you would say that it is like a reference for future projects as well. And also for conflict resolution, you know, just even the, with the, you know, confining myself to, you know, project management, evaluation and techniques and monitoring, whatever. So, you know, it's also for conflict resolution because, the, you know, the management would try to, of any company in case it's handling a project, would try to resolve any issues without the intervention of the court or even arbitration. So that's arbitration court is a legal part of it, but um, before any conflict, it grows into a dispute. So reports play a very important role as evidence. Apart from that, of course, as future reference for future projects, uh, like you know, you already know the feasibility, the possibility, the probability of handling this, uh, the experience of handling projects, and you also set a kind of a um, you know, a uh, precedent saying that yes, this kind of projects can be handled in such and such an area and so on. I'm sure you're understanding what I'm saying. So next thing is project evaluation begins with planning, then implementation, assessment, 
formative evaluation, that is at the initial stage, formative evaluation, the process is evaluated. Next is completion report, preparation stage after summative evaluation, overall evaluation, holistic evaluation of the outcome and impact, that is maximization of outcomes, how best you could uh, really deliver the project, the outcome, the best outcome that is have maximizing the goal of evaluation is to maximize outcomes, to maximize outcomes, is to concentrate on the vision, the provision in order to maximize the outcome and impact. For that, what you have to do, strategize, strategize. Now, and finally, filing and dissemination of relevant information to the concerned as mentioned in the reports. For example, now investors and stakeholders may want to understand the development in the project while the project is ongoing. So evaluation reports, status reports, you know, uh, they are sent to them to keep them updated on the project status. Now the approaches, evaluation approaches. Project evaluation concerns itself with the systematic. This is again another keyword, systematic. Systematic collection, systematic collection. Now, again, we will revise what were the keywords, vision, provision. The third one, what did I say the third one was? Vision, provision, what was the third one? Strategy. Okay. Vision, provision, strategy. No, I... Effective, perfect. Who said effective? How much did they? Did they? Okay, good. So provision, a vision, provision, effectivity, strategy yeah. will also keep you know a maximization of outcomes. Okay, just keep even this in mind. You can write yes, it down yes. if you want. Yeah, maximization of outcomes. The fifth 